we're excited and there's a lot of context behind inviting shobhit to this conversation but just for just for everyone dialing in before i introduce shobhit um quick word on grip uh, we're an alternative investment platform focused on fixed income investments we've now been in business for 3 years enabled uh, enabled about 800 crores in investments to the platform uh, we appreciate all all the patronage we've got from you and thank you for joining this webinar um shobhit uh, as um first of all thank you for for taking out time uh, i'm sure it's been incredibly hectic you've been had you've had a busy uh, year fundraising Uh, on the on the lending side uh, we've been we've been really proud to be associated with navi um our first bond the first bond that we ever had on our platform was navi and um, we completed as you know the maturity of the bond last week uh, just yeah. for everyone's information about 22 crores was invested in that bond by itself through grips platform uh, and about 5000 users Uh, several of your other products have been listed on the platform most recently a uh, ptc paper um, a securitization paper that we offered under the name lonex and uh, very you know excited to be con to continue to associate with uh, navi and what you're building for everyone's background um, shobhit leads uh, lending and fundraising at uh, navi uh, i'll allow shobhit to introduce navi not that it requires that much background um shobhit has personally has an experience uh, both working with both deutsche bank and then standard chartered in credit and in and more specifically in structured credit um i think we will benefit tremendously from those discussions as we as grip is a platform that's largely bringing those structured credit options to a retail investor so shobhit looking forward to the conversation um for everyone's benefit raman is also on the call raman works at grip he leads uh, not only our bond product but leads a very exciting initiative that we have at grip which is to set up a alternative investment fund under the cat2 license that sebi has um and raman and i will be jointly hosting uh, shobhit and and asking him some questions perfect shobhit over to you would love to hear a little bit more about yourself and navi um any background that you would like to share the company's come a incredibly long way it's now been 11 years but will would love to hear more about the company and maybe a little bit about the future direction sure nikhil uh, thanks nikhil and raman uh, for having me on your uh, platform and uh, co-hosting this so a uh, little bit background about navi uh, navi has just completed 5 years of its uh, existence uh, on 10 december 2023 uh, it's uh, it's founded by mr sachin bansal and mr ankit agarwal and uh, in fact i'm the first employee to you know join them uh, just before navi was getting uh, started so i have seen it uh, from the inception uh, i was there when it was not decided whether they wanted to be in uh, financial services or uh, you know pharma sector so so it's it's been a, it has been an incredible journey uh, in last 5 years today navi is into majorly four businesses uh, one is lending which is the most scaled up business uh, for navi and uh, we are into personal loan and housing loan then we have uh, our own insurance general insurance where we are primarily focusing on health we have our own amc uh, which is again uh, specializing in uh, passive equity schemes uh, low cost and um, and then we have just launched our upi product uh, you know upi payments so all these uh, products are uh, meant for retail investors uh, you know sachin's vision is to make financial services simple affordable accessible for uh, you know 1 billion indians and uh, gradually any product that we add to our app or to a suite of services uh, will be you know focused towards uh, uh, that vision so so uh, and you know to cut intermediation bring cost down and uh, yeah make things uh, super easy for uh, you know for retail customers uh, uh, just think like if 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 hdfc bank or uh, you know kotak bank they have to start today from scratch uh, how will they look like so you know in, in the um, in the era of uh, this technology or in the era of this kind of a digital stack uh, that is there and and at times where you know consumers are much more uh, internet friendly so uh, so you know that's a brief introduction about uh, navi as a group and uh, yeah today i'm taking care of lending business and uh, and uh, borrowings lending as i said 
lending as i said is the most scaled up business uh, uh, for navi so far it's uh, it's a profitable business as well uh, we just crossed uh, 10000 crore of aum uh, with personal loans being the majority of it and uh, and it's a well run business with uh, you know high profitability <laughs> high capital adequacy ratio and a very very diversified uh, borrowing franchise um, as you said you know uh, uh, you uh, grip itself has uh, two of our uh, products and uh, we have been raising borrowings uh, you know through mlds in the past uh, which is no longer uh, you know uh, let's say permitted by uh, government um, term loans commercial papers private placement of ncds public issuances of debt we have done two public issuances of debt uh, credit finance papers like uh, ptcs uh we started with double a minus and recently we issued triple a rated ptc uh, i think which is also being offered on a grip platform and uh, we are doing a lot of off balance sheet financing also through sale of portfolio as well as uh, co lending so yeah uh, uh, it's it's a it's you know varied means of financing uh, which uh, navi is using Uh, thank you so much shobit sorry sorry I'm, uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you i mean given the first line that shobit said about choosing between financial services and pharma mm. uh, and I, at least i haven't heard that before uh, shobit you have to tell us how did you guys decide those are two no not extremes but those are two two very different sides of the of the coin and i also think that there's a very interesting story how shobit joined them given that you know there's two diverse sectors that he's talking about shobit any light on that as well so uh, see sachin is arguably one of the best entrepreneurs of this generation uh, the kind of wealth that he has created for investors uh, employees company uh, is is mind boggling so apart from all this acumen uh, he also came uh, to the table with uh, 1 billion dollar kind of a capital and uh, he has to justice to that uh, kind of focus centricity that he brings towards consumer tech and and the capital so financial services seem like a better uh, you know um, platform or uh, you know better canvas uh, to make a huge uh, impact uh, than uh, than the pharma sector and uh, and incidentally you know uh, at during that time sachin was i think using one of the banks uh, app and it was down for a couple of days and uh, you know consumers were not able to access that app for two days so that Uh, seemed pretty strange to Sachin, and uh, he thought there is a lot more to do uh, in this segment uh, than maybe you know other segments, uh, which you know he was toying with. So again, you can imagine you know Sachin doing e-commerce um, for ten years, and suddenly you know he knows now about financial services much more than let's say all of us. So that's the kind of journey we have seen uh, in last five years, and uh, that's what true entrepreneurs bring to the table. Uh, they look for the canvas the, they have vision and then they get uh, people to execute it yeah no that's incredible raman you had a question yeah uh, so shobit um, you know you spoke about uh, you know sachin obviously uh, starting this and Ank- with ankit um, you know when you talk about lending you know specifically on lending what what is what is it that navi does and uh, what type of lending do you guys uh, generally do and this is for the broader audience to understand you know what kind kind of lending do you guys do sure so today we are into personal loan and uh, housing loan business and uh, personal loan is a simple product it's a term loan product where customers can uh, take loan and uh, they have to pay it in uh, monthly emis um, uh, there is no credit line it, it's a simple term loan product where we offer an amount and we offer a tenure and customer can choose uh, to to take that amount or less than that and similarly they can toggle with the tenure uh, the reason why we have found product market fit or why it has scaled up so much is that it's a completely uh, digitized uh, process where we don't uh, call customers uh, at all uh, either for information or for anything except the KYC Uh, we are not allowed to talk to customers before disbursal customers don't need to give any paper document so we can underwrite anyone and everyone in the country uh, in flat one minute um, without uh, you know any interface with the customer except the app journey so customers find it uh, pretty you know uh, convenient uh, it works 24/7 365 days a year if someone needs money at 11 pm in the night 
they can get it by 11.05. So that's the kind of convenience this uh, product offers. It cuts through barriers of language, uh, you know, hesitation, which some of the customers would have to, you know, walk up to the branch, covering distance. So, uh, so it was a great idea and it was there in uh, pieces. It's not like uh, we started it, but I think we executed it well uh, to be able to reach so many customers. And uh, of course, you know, giving uh, loans is easy. Uh, managing risk is hard uh, and we have been managing it uh, pretty well to be able to run it profitably and scale up um, and, uh, you know, uh, attract that kind of uh, debt funding that is, uh, you know, required to uh, run this business. It, it's a business of leverage. So, so yeah, so far so good. And um, yeah, so that's about our, you know, personal loan product today. We are... Uh, uh, you know, uh, we get applications from 100% of the PIN codes in India and we are present in 89% uh, of the PIN codes. And our target, uh, you know, population or audience is uh, is a young uh, customer, you know, between 25 to 40, uh, urban, semi-urban, middle-class population. Uh, uh, these are the kind of customers who really like our product and uh, form majority of our uh, customer base. Housing loan is a similar business. Uh, it's digitized to the extent it is possible. It will always have that offline fulfillment angle, uh, which, which would be there if you are ordering a taxi or food. Uh, but uh, customers can get financial sanction within five minutes. Uh, just imagine an experience if you walk up to a, you know, under construction property, uh, you like it. And by the time you get to your car, uh, your loan is approved. Uh, approved in the sense, not in principle, but final approved. You can really, you know, book the property. So that's the kind of experience that we are providing on the housing loan segment. We had just started with these two, uh, you know, products. Uh, and mm -hmm. these, we're just scratching the surface. There's so much to do. And uh, now we will eventually venture out into other, uh, you know, um, other means of lending as well um, as we go along in our journey. Fair enough. And currently, obviously, majority of book is personal loans, right? 90% of the book is uh, personal loans. Yeah. And one would think that, you know, obviously, uh, lending, uh, what is the credit background check that you typically do? Because one would think that, you know, doing online lending might be slightly more riskier than, you know, somebody coming and visiting a branch, you doing face-to-face -to -face yeah. interaction and checking on their background. What what kind of background checks, et cetera, that you go through, credit checks of these people? Yeah, Raman. So uh, our app is has a consent-based architecture where we, you know, uh, get access from customer, uh, you know, for the for the device data. Uh, we get information from bureau, uh, not the bureau score, which is a headline number. We have our own score, but we you get a lot of uh, rich data from the bureau, like the trade lines, DBD strings, what kind of, uh, you know, credit cards they have been running, utilization, and so on. So that's one primary source of information. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, uh, Navi is the largest user of, uh, uh, largest user on account aggregator platform, which allows you to access uh, bank statements of customer. Uh, once they share the OTP, yeah. <laughs> then you're integrated with Karza for uh, Provident Fund and, uh, you know, for GST, all those kind of integrations are there, which really helps in underwriting customers better. So, more customer accesses gives us access to these uh, information better offer we will be able to uh, you know provide to customer mm -hmm. now for every 100 customers walking through the door uh, today we are approving around 8 to 9 uh, of these customers so okay. so we are pretty selective about uh, about the credit so and also these are more salaried employees or these are all small small proprietor businesses people like that but if I can just add to that, uh, yeah. uh, the profile because yeah. and I'm relating it to our business because we are also only digital. The kind of customers who come to us are very comfortable transacting digitally, right? And there will be customers who want to invest but prefer a offline approach. Do you see the cohort of your customers uh, to Raman's question become different than what would happen if you were a both offline online NBFC? Uh, or only offline NBFC? 100%. Uh, you know, when you... Uh, so today, we don't have any branch where customers can walk in, uh, even if they want. Uh, we don't have any website uh, as such where customers can apply for the loan. Uh, the only way customers can take loan or avail loan is uh, through an app. So, um, you know, uh, 
it's like uh, you are only present in a particular mall and uh, you uh, you are looking for a particular kind of uh, customer uh, of course there will be adjacencies but we are looking for customers who can uh, you know use mobile who understand uh, how to pay you know emis uh, through mobile and uh, and mm -hmm. yeah you know we so so that separates the cohort uh, you know and uh, 3/4 of our customer base is salaried uh, maybe that's the result of uh, you know the way we can underwrite salaried customers better than uh, self employed and also uh, you know maybe self employed customers are able to get access to loan uh, mm -hmm. in informal economy or uh, you know uh, those kind of things so, so that that's where you know cohort uh, gets defined uh, when you choose uh, how to um, how to uh, attract customers uh, on a platform yeah and one last question on this uh, what is the average ticket size of these loans and tenure generally on an uh, average ticket size is around uh, 65000 and tenure is around uh, 28 29 months but we operate in a very very uh, wide range uh, our ticket size may start from 20,000 and it goes up to 20 lakhs mm -hmm. and uh, our may start from six months and goes up to uh, 72 months. So averages don't do justice to the, let's say, uh, you know, it is not representative of any particular kind of population. Sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, range is wide to be able to cater to a variety of customers. Yeah, yeah. averages actually don't do ho when housing finance is 15 lakhs in this country. Yeah. Um, and you can't even get a house for 15 lakhs in anywhere close by right uh yeah. so you know uh so fair point uh averages generally don't do justice to all of this but um you know uh coming to primarily and you know there are certain questions on uh, the microfinance business uh you know what are your thoughts and what what happened during the chetan chaitanya transaction yeah so uh, so the first thing that we did after incorporating navi was to look for uh, an nbfc that had 10 year of track record uh, because we wanted to apply for universal banking license and mm -hmm. uh, chaitanya kind of uh, fit the bill um, all the boxes were ticked uh, uh, great promoters based out of bangalore and uh, you know uh, and available at a good price so, so we acquired that uh, and we applied for the banking license. Now we punched way above our weight and uh, maybe, you know, that time our AUM was 500 uh, crores. Today our AUM is, uh, you know, uh, more than 10,000 crores. So, uh, so we applied for the banking license and uh, it got a couple of years for, uh, you know, RBI to, let's say, come back and say that, uh, you know, we are not approving or we are not allowing any new participants to get the license. But we turned around the microfinance business uh, in those uh, you know two years, from 500 crore AUM to uh, where we sold Chaitanya, it was 5500 crore AUM. Uh, from uh, losses or break even, it uh, made around uh, 180 crore of profit last year, and it has already made 180 crore of profit in the first uh, six months of uh, this year, from triple B minus rating to A, and. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a classic case of, uh, you know, letting operators run the business, uh, making sure that all the capital is available to them and giving strategic guidance and uh, tight reviews on a monthly basis. That did the trick uh, for Chaitanya Microfinance. So it turned out to be a great investment for us. And um, but unfortunately, it didn't uh, again, uh, you know, when uh, when the license banking license got rejected, and Navi Finso itself has completed 10 years of uh, track record, which makes it eligible for uh, fresh application. Chaitanya was not fitting into overall, uh, uh, you know, retail, digital uh, story of uh, Navi. You know, on one side, you have products like personal loan, housing loan, catering to catering through app, uh, UPI payments, insurance, AMC. And on one side, you have Chaitanya, which is a completely uh, distribution-led, you know, rural uh, business uh, with zero overlap of uh, customers. So then, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, at that point we decided that we will, uh, you know, uh, we will will sell it. It was a hard decision. Uh, it was a great financial asset, and uh, with that, uh, you know, thought process, uh, Chaitanya was sold, and we received uh, fourteen hundred odd crores in November uh, into the group with the sale. It was a cash exit. That's a fantastic, really fantastic story. Um... I'll just, you know, I want to, before we move on from personal loans, I do want to talk about what's happening in the market with respect to 
RBI uh, recent rulings, right, uh, which has, I think, somewhere sounded an alarm bell to say to talk about personal loans, the potential default rates, and has curtailed in a manner the loans that can be given out through the change in limits. Uh, how do you see Shobhi that playing out industry wide? How what is the impact to Navi and how how would the strategy change? Yeah, so I mean, for the benefit of audience, what RBI has done is that uh, it has increased the capital requirement uh, if you are into this business or if you are lending to players who are in this business uh, from 100% to 125%. So basically, now to earn similar return on equity, uh, you have to uh, basically you know uh, make uh, more margin, uh, right? Or you will probably reduce your uh, exposure to that uh, particular segment. So this is what RBI has done. And the reason why RBI has done it because it has seen unprecedented growth uh, in this segment, and uh, it was primarily worried about uh, you know uh, uh, about any bubble kind of a situation forming uh, where uh, uh, non credit worthy customers are getting loans, and uh, and it poses a, a systemic risk to the um, uh, to the country. Um, so so that's what RBI did. Now what it will do is uh, it will uh, it will uh, reduce the supply of capital uh, to this segment. Uh, people are going to withdraw from it uh, to an extent. Uh, banks, NBFCs, but there is but there is nothing happening on the demand side. Uh, people still need money. Uh, those who are needing money, and uh, it will kind of create an imbalance. Uh, you know uh, the, the the equilibrium that was there. Uh, you you suddenly have. Uh, 80% supply and 100% demand. So, so we see it as a white space. Um, we see that competition will recede. And uh, if you are selective about the credit that you give, uh, if you are managing your risk well, then you can make uh, more money. Uh, you know, uh, your acquisition cost will go down. Probably you will be able to charge a little bit more. And, uh, and that will help you in, uh, you know, uh, 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 maintaining higher profitability so you have to play it out well rbi reduced these risk weights in 2019 and after four years they have increased it so they are not going back on this uh, uh, soon enough uh, probably at least a couple of years this is going to be there and uh, we are watching the space very closely uh, we will monitor that how risk is behaving um, you know, uh, because some of the customers who will stop getting loans now, probably, uh, probably, you know, uh, they will show early signs of stress or delinquency. So we will be watching this space uh, closely. And uh, if 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 we continue to perform well, uh, which we hope for, then uh, we will go for uh, you know capturing higher market share. Um, so RBI is ringing bells on uh, primarily on less than fifty thousand uh, ticket size loans. And for Navi, more than 85% of AM is uh, above 50,000 loans. So we are fairly insulated uh, uh, in that manner. And also compared to a lot of other players, Navi has a large on balance sheet uh, you know, exposure. Uh, it has a large amount of equity capital. We are just flushed with cash from uh, Chaitanya equity and our leverage is also low. So we can, uh, we are in position to, you know, uh, if we feel that the market is uh, great and uh, we are getting good credit, we can really expand uh, from here and capture larger market share in, uh, in uh, you know, two to three quarters. Understood. No, that's that's very interesting uh, perspective. And, and like you said, very different from others because most people we speak to are talking about receding. And here you're, you're seeing an opportunity in doing that. And, and given the the ability to process data uh, very differently. I think that that does give you a different edge. Um, Raman, if you had other question on lending, let's go. I, I want to go back to how Navi borrows, mm -hmm. uh, link it to bonds and SDIs. But if you had any, there are, there are two, two interesting questions in the chat box that I thought, you know, uh, I should ask. Uh, so uh, one of our users have asked, uh, you know, if you sanction loans within five minutes, how do you see a challenge on technology? Uh, technology as a risk panning out going forward. That's one. And do you, uh, and to the second part of the question that Nikhil asked, you know, do you see your cost of capital going up because of this risk weightage yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, I'll take the second question first. So hmm. cost of capital uh, will go up, uh, hmm. will go up. Uh, so we borrow from, let's say, six different avenues. 
and the impact on each avenue will be different mm. uh, um, given that there is a large amount of equity uh, on balance sheet also so so we expect cost impact to be minimal uh, but they will be they will be uh, they will definitely be uh, higher cost uh, you know uh, everything uh, being same now if your rating gets upgraded or you know you are more profitable or you are able to negotiate better deal uh, of course you can utilize these things mm -hmm. but uh, everything being equal uh, cost of capital will go up for everyone uh, who are doing this business on the other side uh, as i said you know supply is limited and demand is still there and customers in this segment are not that rate sensitive as you would find a customer who is purchasing a, a television or a, you know shopping on e-commerce because they don't talk about the rates at which they are borrowing uh, with each other uh, right so there is great uh, great amount of insensitivity uh, when it comes to interest rate and uh, you can almost every player i think can protect their uh, nims uh, what they call uh, net interest margin uh, in a situation like this, what they have to worry about or what they have to uh, make sure is that uh, risk is managed well, because uh, you know some of these some of the players who were primarily doing business under less than fifty thousand and suddenly they stop getting money. How will they behave is to be seen. Uh, it'll not be as serious as COVID, but uh, but yeah, this is something which is going to pan out in next uh, you know two to four or five months. Sure. And. Uh, uh, on the second question on technology risk in processing all the data that you get in five minutes. So Navi is a tech company uh, out of 900 corporate employees, 600 of them are, uh, you know, uh, tech. And wow. uh, with Sachin at the helm, uh, I've honestly never worried or never thought about uh, technology risks as such. Uh, a lot of things uh, that Navi does is built in house uh, instead of, you know, taking from vendors. Things as simple as loan origination system, loan management system, all these things are built in-house, which gives us a, a very different kind of flexibility uh, to scale them and uh, to protect from any kind of, uh, you know, attack or any kind of uh, risk, uh, which, which let's say, is uh, common uh, for, you know, other banking players. Sure. All right. Uh, Shobit, let's move to the other side. Um, and, you know, you just mentioned that you have six sources of capital. I think the one that I want to spend more time on is the bonds. Uh, you obviously do public bonds, private placements. And now, you know, we've, we've done a SDR or what we call an SDR, you call a PTC. Um, how do you think about each of these products from a cap table, cap structure perspective? Uh, and, you know, if I can deep dive, how do you think of bonds versus the PTC? as an option uh, for raising capital? Yeah, so uh, so a lot of questions. Um, Navi has always kind of, uh, you know, tried to do things on a first time, uh, or for the first time, let's say in the industry, we, uh, we were one of the few A-rated NBFCs who came up with the uh, made in public issuance of debt uh, last year in June, and that also for 500 crores. Uh, it came at a very tricky time. It came between two rate hikes, first two rate hikes uh, that we were seeing in the cycle. And uh, we managed to sell uh, through, uh, uh, through the time. And it kind of encouraged a lot of other players, uh, uh, you know, A rated, A plus rated. Uh, we have seen uh, issuances from Vivriti, Arka, uh, you know, in recent days. So it's very heartening to see that uh, we have kind of, uh, you know, uh, helped other companies in uh, in uh, navigating through this whole, uh, you know, uh, public issuance uh, market, which uh, 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 which was quite encouraging for us. And the reason why public issuance uh, scores over private placement, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, private placement now the face value or the you know. Uh, Minimum investment has been reduced from 10 lakhs to 1 lakhs. But in public issuance, um, the face value is, I think, 1,000. And uh, you can you have to apply for a minimum 10 lots. So that makes it 10,000. But uh, once it's listed, you can trade it in a lot of, uh, you know, 1,000. So it's much more accessible and affordable. Uh, uh, it, it increases your coverage by almost uh, 30, 40 times, uh, you know, when you are issuing a public issuance, when you're doing a public issuance. 
it's of course a little cumbersome uh, and uh, sebi is trying to now make it a little more easier uh, to access the market they do no, they do note that today out of 100 rupees raised through bonds uh, 98 of them are raised through private placement and two from through public issuances so that ratio has to change so uh, so we have done two public issuances so far and we are getting ready for the third one uh, which we are planning to bring in uh, february and the why we are uh, uh, why we think that this is the uh, this is the most promising route of fundraising for Navi is because it's a bottomless pit. Uh, you know, but we are just scratching the surface. Uh, in the first app, in the first issuance, we got five thousand applications. In the second one, we got ten thousand. And uh, you know, uh, these numbers are nothing uh, compared to the equity participation that we have compared to FD. You know, uh, participation that we have. So so it's going to increase exponentially. And uh, if we if we start bringing public issuances so early in our journey, uh, people will make money when we get uh, rating upgrades, and they, and they will remember, uh, right? So and that will help us in building a deep franchise of uh, raising money through uh, public markets on the debt side. So that's why we are very bullish on uh, this whole public issuances, and we are really hoping that CB uh, kind of uh, bringing new guidelines which will make it a little easier uh, to uh, tap the market at frequent intervals. You don't, you should not be waiting for nine months, 12 months, uh, you know, to complete the process. Fair enough. And, um, and, and Shobit, how do you think about bonds versus a PTC? And, and maybe just to clarify for everyone's perspective, um, when I mean PTC, it's the securitization product that you have recently done. And that we have on our platform as well. Um, for our users, this is what we call Loan X. Uh, but as you compare these two options of raising capital, is there a preference or is it it's a good to have a mixed bag? It's good to have a mixed bag, uh, Nikhil. Uh, so uh, you know, so let me give you a little bit perspective as to how we think when we are uh, you know thinking uh, how to raise money. Um, when you raise money through PTCs, uh, you have to allocate uh, certain receivables, uh, loan receivables on your balance sheet. And PTC kind of competes uh, with the other product that we have, which is a, a sale of uh, portfolio, which is a direct assignment. Uh, right. So, so if you have 100 rupee of portfolio to be less available to be sold, then you have to think whether you will do PTC or you will do a direct assignment. So, so the choice uh, thing comes. Um, PTCs uh, tend to be little cheaper uh, than uh, bonds because uh, they are uh, credit enhanced and uh, and, uh, and and right now I'm talking from issuer perspective and uh, and they're easier to issue but we can uh, if, if we let's say find investor we can issue we can package and we can uh, issue PTC in flat four to five days Public issuance is a cumbersome process. Maybe if we work very hard, we can do two or three issuances, uh, public debt. And PDC, we do two or three every month. Uh, so that's the difference between uh, these two. Yeah. From investor perspective, um, now it's a level playing field. Earlier, you, earlier investors used to get a lot of, uh, let's say, tax advantage when they were putting their money in debt mutual funds, uh, which is gone now. So, so they are kind of indifferent between, let's say, in terms of tax between debt mutual fund and holding the bond directly, and, and uh, that makes platforms like Grip, uh, you know, very critical. And uh, and I see tremendous growth in these, uh, you know, in the offtake from these platforms because uh, investors can get better yield, uh, you know, when they pick up the bond uh, directly. And as you, as a platform, when you establish liquidity, uh, ability for them to sell, uh, you know, when they want, uh, that's when the market gets uh, deepen, and uh, you know, you will see, uh, you will see exponential growth in the in the segment. PTC, PTC has, I think, high face value, and uh, it was primarily meant for institutional investors who are very picky about the risk, and that's why you know they rated uh, high. But for discerning investors, if you know uh, if they are looking for a higher credit rating uh, and may maybe you know lower return than a bond, then it makes a lot more sense. And it's a slightly short term uh, instrument as well. You get monthly payments, uh, principal as well as interest, and it gets over at least for Navi, it gets over in fifteen to sixteen months time. Uh, whereas uh, you know bond is a eighteen month bullet or twenty seven month bullet uh, kind of a structure. 
so it caters to different kind of investors who are looking for uh, you know locked funds versus uh, monthly return for example people who are into business who want who are looking to park uh, extra money into something where they get uh, uh, cash flows on a recurring basis ptc is a great route and uh, let's say they are risk averse they are looking for triple a double a plus kind of uh, uh, instruments to uh, park their money with so so yeah understood no thanks uh, so much for that perspective and I fully agree i think we also see actually see a very interest similar investor behavior we see investors actually investing in both ptcs and bonds even of the same company or different companies and they're able to create a good mix between risk return and tenure by playing between these two products yeah Raman, back to you. So yeah, uh, so Shobit, uh, you know, you you touched upon you know direct assignment versus PTC as well. What are what are the decisions that that lead you to either do a PTC or or you know uh, look at direct assignment? That's one. I'll ask my second questions follow up question on this as well. So yeah, so slightly technical. Uh, hmm. Again, RBI has regulations around PTC. What you can uh, what you can package under PTC has needs to have a residual tenor of twelve months or more. Okay. Uh, and there is no such restriction in direct assignment, uh, right? So, so yeah, PTC is more restrictive in that uh, sense. Uh, from so that makes it more safer. Uh, no, you can't say that. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can't, you can't say that. Um, so that is one. Uh, again, from issuer perspective when you do direct assignment the portfolio is getting out of your book and uh, you can book uh, profit uh, when you sell uh, immediately mm -hmm. uh, right and it reduces the leverage uh, the money that you get is not counted towards any debt so so just to give you example let's say you know i have 200 crore of assets and i have 100 crore of uh, equity and 100 crore of debt and if I am able to sell 100 crore under direct assignment and with the money I retired debt, my balance sheet will look like 100 crore of equity and 100 crore of asset. So there is absolutely no debt. Uh, that is under direct assignment. In PTC, whatever money you raise, sit on your balance sheet as debt. So it gets counted towards your leverage. Uh, it's not off balance sheet. So uh, from an issuer perspective, direct assignment is more preferred. It keeps reducing your leverage. You pass on the risk uh, to the guy who is purchasing the pool, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and yeah, and you you get to book the profit. No fair point. That's why I believe that you know there's a higher share of direct assignments versus PTC. Yeah. No, no, it makes a lot of sense as a issuer to look at it from that perspective. No, thanks for yeah. this. And direct assignment you can only do to institutional uh, guys, uh, you know, like banks and NBFCs. Whereas PTC investors, it's a wide spectrum. Uh, we used to do it to bank treasuries. Now we are doing it to MNC banks, NBFCs. And now recently, you know, there is a strong demand coming in from the retail side and HNI side also. So, so that, uh, yeah, that increases your investor base. So yeah, you will always have pros and cons. And uh, the way Navi is growing, it uh, needs money from wherever it's possible. Yeah, true. Um, Shobhita, I know we are, we are running out of time. So, um, maybe last couple of questions from my side and maybe into the future, right? Um, how do you see things evolving? And I know while you don't directly look at it, how does Navi think about offering investment options as well? You obviously already offer the mutual fund options and, and there are a number of other products, but is that a critical part for Navi going forward? Yeah, like an interesting question. So... So today, uh, what Navi is uh, Navi is offering on the app is, uh, you know, um, so if you look at any customer, uh, you know, the, the thing that they need on a daily basis is uh, UPI payments, uh, which is there. Uh, customers are going to use it on a daily basis. And then we have a product like home loan, which customers needed for 20 years. So that's a very wide spectrum from daily to uh, 20. Uh, right. Um, then if you look at, let's say, uh, investments, um, so, you know, mutual fund investments or SIP, today we are offering it only on the equity side, but that's kind of a monthly product, uh, right? Then you have personal loan, which probably, you know, if I can put my finger, it, it, let's say somebody wants it in six months time or 12 months time. And then you have insurance, which uh, again, uh, you know, customers want it uh, as a yearly product. So, uh, so today this is our range. A very limited range, uh, but it's spanning from a daily to 20 years. 
and uh, we will be adding uh, everything under you know uh, spend borrow protect uh, these themes uh, to the app uh, it uh, either it's on the brokerage side or it's on the investment side like investing in gsex or maybe uh, you know um, any kind of let's say useful debt product and uh, yeah and uh, more loan products uh, insurance on the auto side so these things will gradually come over a period of time uh, it will be it i mean the vision is grand uh, for uh, retail customers yeah no i love how you express it uh, to be you know linking it to the the frequency with which a user can interact with your product um, yeah. if you're able to offer the full solution across different timelines it becomes a great use case um okay um shubhit i'm going to go to a couple of questions that are in the chat box um and some of them are maybe a little bit uh, uh, nuanced and specific to the answers you've already given uh, one is you know if ptcs are on the balance sheet of the user how is it bankruptcy remote and you know if you don't mind i'd maybe take a first shot at it and and ask you to please add for details uh, so shankar to your question um the uh, bankruptcy remote means that even in case the originating nbfc was to for some reason go out of business uh, become Ill illiquid the underlying loans which are being securitized or assigned will continue to operate will continue to give interest and principal and hence you are in a way safeguarded from the uh, issuer itself to further protect this there is an alternative issuer that is assigned that will take on the operation of these loans if you look at the navi uh, ptc that we are offering on the platform of the navi sdi you will notice that there is an alternative issuer that has been assigned by navi to take over if that situation arises uh, and hence in that structure uh, it's bankruptcy remote for the originator shobit if you could you know add correct me please yeah yeah so there are two parts of the you know question uh, it's on balance sheet because it's an ind s uh, requirement uh it has changed earlier it was not the case uh, i think ptcs were given off balance sheet treatment so it's a pure accounting thing uh, which is being governed by uh, ind s uh, because of which you know they are counted on balance sheet having said that uh, the principles of uh, ptc are that you know you put receivables in a trust uh, structure where uh, you know uh, trustee receives uh, the money and uh, and the payouts happen it's very different from giving charge on the receivables and as nikhil mentioned uh, there is a backup servicer and um, the reason why all rating agencies like crisel or icra or uh, you know fitch would give higher credit rating than issuer is because of the fact that it's a bankruptcy remote uh, otherwise uh, you know otherwise uh, just conjuring some of the receivables and getting higher rating uh is not possible if there is no structural involvement uh, in this yeah perfect <clears throat> a related question uh, shobhit is around you know and you mentioned this that bonds will typically give higher bonds of the same issuer will typically have a higher return than the ptc um and this is a question that hari is asked but i think it's important to distinguish that there may be a, that there'll be a difference in the risk uh, because yeah. the way it's structured do you want to spend a couple of minutes detailing that yeah so uh, bonds will have uh, you know uh, bond represent the credit risk of the issuer so uh, let's take an example of navi navi is today rated a and uh, bonds will get rating of a they will not get higher rating or lower rating than that uh, right so th that is bond uh, ptcs are credit enhanced uh, so if let's say investors are giving 100 rupees of for the ptc what they get is uh, 110 rupee of <laughs> receivables then they get uh, 10 rupee of uh, fd uh, as collateral uh, suppose you know there is less collection then the trustee will dip into that uh, cash collateral to make the payments and there is this uh, excess interest spread which is called eis so we are let's say giving loans at 26 27% and uh, ptcs are issued at let's say 9 9 1/2% uh, the difference of 17% comes to the trust and again if there is dip in collection efficiency then they can use this money uh, towards principal payment and if there is uh, no dip in collection efficiency they will pass on this excess interest spread to uh, issuer or servicer like uh, navi so all these three things together give lot of credit protection and that's why they get a higher rating uh, navi started issuing double a minus uh, ptcs 
and given the performance of the pool now we command uh, aaa rating uh, for the pdc that we are showing uh, recently and uh, and the credit enhancement you know as i said is in form of over collateralization cash collateral and excess interest spread that comes to trustee to make good the payment to the investors thank you uh, i i don't think uh, we have done ever done a good enough job to explain this but you uh, you know we will make sure that we use the same script next time thank you for explaining that uh, raman any final question yeah. that you have for shobit no shobit um, uh, earlier on in the conversation you had mentioned that your vision is to provide banking and financial services uh, both on the lending and investment side each and every individual uh, we at grip also have a similar thought process we want alternative investments to be accessible to people uh, our thought uh, you know when we came up with and whether it's loan x or whether it's uh, you know lease x all the products that we bring we tend to bring down uh, we try, we try to make sure that it's it's at an affordable starting point and sebi has been kind enough that you know over the last two documents that they've come out with they've reduced the uh, the private placement from 10 lakh rupees per bond to now 1 lakh and now they're even thinking about doing 10000 how do you see sebi's role uh, in promoting the overall bond market for retail participation in this country yeah um, so raman uh, you know tech stack or this whole digital infrastructure stack for india is uh, you know uh, above i think everyone else the way you know we can do upi payments people can receive money in 2 seconds the way equity settlements happen you know uh, t plus 2 and all those things these are these are very aspirational things for a lot of other countries including uh, developed economies uh, and sebi can see that the kind of uh, growth they've seen on the equity side uh, is not there on the debt side and that's why you will see lot of consultation papers and a lot of focus from the new uh, sebi chairperson on uh, deepening the bond market it has been talked about since uh, last 10 15 years but i see lot more focus this time uh, to you know uh, to develop the bond market to deepen it uh, to take the product to you know uh, retail investors is <laughs> so much of money going into you know uh, fds so uh, so uh, you know uh, and A lot of times, regulations catch up to the reality, and uh, you know, uh, players like Grip, uh, you know, uh, suddenly they have made uh, possible for uh, you know players like Navi to be able to think or tap public markets uh, twice a year, uh, right? Because uh, because you channelize uh, you know all these savings investments from retail investors to uh, to issuers like Navi, and uh, I see. you know i see lot of regulations which will come which will help you grow you know exponentially from uh, this point and uh, you know and you will see more and more issuances more and more issuers uh, not necessarily triple a not necessarily double a you know coming into the market and uh, mobilizing uh, you know uh, funds i mean it's win win for all it's win for retail investors uh you know um, uh, i'm talking about ideal situation like you know they don't get stuck with dhfl kind of a uh, paper uh and uh, you know win win for issuers uh and uh, you know they are able to access uh, you know good quality money long term money at a reasonable cost cutting out the intermediation uh, cutting out let's say let's say banks are the intermediator right uh, uh, people uh, give money to banks as fd and then banks give loan to let's say us uh, nbfcs so it's kind of a you know disintermediation theme where uh, you kind of mobilize money directly from uh, the end uh, investor and uh, yeah everybody gains out of it yeah no uh, it's so good to hear this from you um obviously it you know this is exactly what we are excited about and and excited to keep building grip around um like raman sir i think we've been fortunate and and also fortunate to get support from issuers such as yourself who have pushed that boundary and and you know been first to market with bringing out smaller tickets a um, lot of lot of users on the platform like i mentioned before began their journey with navi as a bond and then got the confidence to continue investing so also thank you for for being supportive uh, including with your time today and taking time to speak to us on this session really appreciate it so shobit and look forward to keep working with you any final thoughts that you'd like to add before we wrap up the session 
Um, no, thanks, Nikhil and Raman for uh, having me over and uh, best of luck. I think, um, yeah, Grip as a platform is offering a lot of products and it's, uh, uh, it's yeah, the future is bright. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Robert. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone for dialing in. Thank you. Bye. Investments in debt securities are subject to risks. Read all the offer-related documents carefully.